giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello, everyone. Welcome to First Capital Robot in Three Days. I'm Ben with Team 225. Also, we've got members of Team 2590 Nemesis here. Um, and it's been a fantastic build so far. We almost have a completed robot. We have just, uh, just over 12 hours remaining, about 15 hours here, um, to finish this robot up, get it all coded, and uh, hopefully show you some great stuff tomorrow at noon. Anyway, uh, we want to thank our fantastic sponsors for helping us to put on this, uh, this event here and really uh, to showcase this robot to the world and everything. So we want to thank Vex Robotics, we want to thank Andy Mark, we want to thank Rev Robotics, we want to thank First Updates Now for hosting us on, generously on the stream. We want to thank Coupling Corporation of America, our generous build space here, uh, Paragon Engineering Services, Pen Air, and also the York County Convention Vis and Visitors Bureau, who is also sponsoring this event for us and is generously allowing us to host the state championship in New York, helping to fund that here this coming March So, uh, for FTC. So thank, uh, you know, thanks so much to them as well for supporting us through this generous endeavor. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Tyler, and he's going to talk a little bit about some of the giveaways we got going on tonight. Hey, thanks, Ben. And by the way, sorry if there's some music playing in the background there, chat. But as Ben mentioned, we have some fantastic giveaways, actually five total items to give away. I'm going to ask Ben to grab the first one there if he yeah, doesn't mind. absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about that, Ben? Yeah, sure. Um, Michaela, would you mind coming up here? All right, she's going to show off our really awesome uh, First Capital Robot in Three Days jersey shirt. It's a jersey material similar to uh, some of the materials that a lot of teams use where it's, it's it feel, what do you, what do you think about the jersey material versus a normal t-shirt, Michaela? Uh, I really like the jersey material. It doesn't feel like cotton at all. It, it feels like a jersey, so it's, yeah. it's really nice quality. Anyway, you could win one of these super stylish First Capital Robot in Three Days uh, jersey shirts right here. So that's going to be one of the giveaways that we have here tonight. Absolutely. Uh, a couple other things, too. You might have saw it a little bit kind of teased on screen a little bit before, but we are giving away uh, from our friends over at uh, Redfish Robotics. We have a first updates now uh, mug. We don't actually don't sell these, but uh, Redfish stepped up and said, hey, uh, we want to be able to give these away. Uh, are you interested? And we are delighted to. And thanks a lot to Redfish Robotics for doing that. So we do have a mug giveaway. Uh, and then from our friends at Analog Devices, we have a couple things uh, from them. First off is the ADIS 16448IMU, which you can check out. Uh, this is part of the iSensor product line, which is known in the industry as best in class when reliability and precision are key. Supporting libraries are available on GitHub, and you can find user guides at analog.com forward slash first we also have uh of course uh two of the great things we've given away for a long time two gyro boards that we're going to be giving away uh, i do want to mention these are only available through first choice or fun this year so if you're interested either you got to win them or at the second round first choice coming up you got to make sure you get in on that uh for that as well and once again analog.com forward slash first uh, is where you can get all these awesome things big shout out and thank you to analog devices inc as well as red fish robotics and of course uh first team capital for everything they're doing here today if you're interested in winning uh these fantastic uh items all you have to do is make sure you click that little follow button near the top of the screen or if you like and are interested in supporting fun Support us with a subscription. You can get it for free through Twitch Prime, or if your parents have Amazon Prime, go ahead and link it. Or for just a few bucks a month, you'll get five times chance to win. There's going to be a keyword near the end of the show. We'll be drawing five times for five different winners. Good luck, everybody, and enjoy the show. All right. Thanks so much, Tyler. So 
we're going to go through a lot of the different subsystems and some of the work that we've done on the robot over the last day. Um, I think that I speak for a lot of us that for many of us here, this is the most complicated robot we've ever worked on uh, to some extent. Even though it's only done in three days, we were really surprised that we are able to cram this much into it um, over the span of that time. Really, uh, we only have a little bit of um, programming left to do and finishing some odds and ends like bumpers and such um, in order to, to finish up. So hopefully we can show you a really um, a nicely polished robot on stream tomorrow. We, we, we hope, we really hope. Um, so to start going through some of the different elements of this robot, uh, I'm going to start by calling up Griffin. Um, he's going to talk uh, about our game manipulator device and where we're at with that right now. Hey, real quick before you bring him on, yeah. Ben, I do want to mention if you do have questions oh, yes. for the RE3D team, make sure you take at first updates now in chat. Lovely Heather will be taking your questions. And if you haven't noticed, we have a poll up on screen right now. If you uh, hover over to the left side of your screen, there's a poll that comes up. And, Ben, we're going to uh, do something a little crazy here, and we're actually going to let chat decide the robot name tonight, right? Yes, so there yes are, we are. There's four names, and we asked, actually, if you were out watching earlier, we asked chat to kind of narrow it down. So here are your choices. Hot Yoga, Chungus X, I don't even know what that means. I don't think I want to. Uh, Deep Spacito and Des Destination Deep Dish. So go ahead, if you hover over the left-hand side of your screen, there should be a poll that pops up and lets you pick, and we'll announce that near the end of the show as well. Yeah, you know, we thought this would be kind of fun. So, you know, pick your favorite name out of those, and we'll see what, uh, you know, we'll see what chat decides. Anyway, I'm gonna hand it over to Griffin. He's gonna display our end of, uh, excuse me, explain our end effector. Thanks, Ben. Uh, I'm Griffin from T2590. Uh, we've been talking a lot about our uh, end effector on the end of the four bar here. Um, we've gone with an integrated mechanism, uh, so both of our cargo and the uh, hatch pickup are both integrated into one mechanism. Um, that was mostly for uh, space constraint reasons. Um, we were struggling to figure out how to get both uh, game manipulators on the robot if they weren't integrated into one mechanism. So on the underneath here, uh, we have the hatch panel pickup. Uh, it functions with Velcro, uh, and so essentially you can just flop this down onto the ground. Yeah, Christian's going to uh, stick one onto the front here. Yeah, just uh, attaches to the game piece via the Velcro that's already there. Uh, and then we have these three pneumatic cylinders underneath. One, two, three. Uh, and those function as ejector pins. Uh, so we can fire the solenoid at those. Uh, and these will, I think the robots, oh no, there we go. So these uh, extend out about two inches uh, and pops the hatch panel right off. Uh, so we can drive over to the rocket or the cargo ship, deploy those, uh, and that'll push the panel off the robot right onto the field. Um, so this is now underneath the actual cargo intake, uh, which is right behind it over here. Uh, we have a simple overbar uh, intake mechanism. Yep, you can grab the cargo there. Uh, it's off, right? Yeah, I can just fold it down. Yep, so we can roll the cargo right in like that. Uh, the robot's off right now, but it, it works really well. Yep. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of demo coming later. Uh, both of those uh, game piece manipulators, manipulators seem to be working really well right now. We're, we're really happy with how it turned out. Uh, they're both really simple. Um, we were able to make them all in three days, uh, and we're happy with it. Came out. Back to Ben. Awesome. This is uh, stuck under here. Hold on. There you go. Awesome. Thanks for showing us so much, Griffin. All right, I'm going to call up uh, Christian Dehani. They're going to talk to us a little bit here about the wrist mechanism that we developed. This really wasn't, uh, this was just being built uh, when we called on you yesterday here. And we've managed to build it. We had it done around, like, what was it, like noonish, something like that? Yeah, about noon today. Yeah. So, anyway, they're going to go over that with you guys. Uh, yeah, so between. Uh, yesterday and today, we uh, developed uh, the the wrist mechanism uh, that basically allows us to uh, pick up the the uh, hatch off the floor and also rotate it so that we can pick up uh, the ball off the floor. And it basically allows. Um, so if we put the hatch panel like under it. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, yeah, we can beat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it allows us to pick up the hatch panel, uh, choose uh, different angles, so that either we can pick up uh, off the human player station, place them on the rocket, or or even um, which we haven't tested yet, but will probably work. Uh, the behind the back shot with the ball into the rocket. Uh, hopefully that works out. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that's uh, what we have for the uh, the wrist. All right, thanks, guys. And as you see, we're still working on programming a lot of set points and uh, and things of that nature. We just got a lot of our electrical debugging done, so we've got uh, a few more hours left tonight. Uh, might stay a little bit past our planned time to try to get a lot of these extra set points in here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and call on uh, Michaela. She's going to talk a little bit about what we've done electrically with this robot since you last saw us here. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, our electrical panel is on the back of the robot. Hmm? Yeah. So if you turn it around, uh, all of the electrical is on the back. Um, and so we have talons and our PDP and all of the rest of our solenoids on the back here. Um, and our Robo Rio is on the belly pan. So our wiring is a little messy and haphazard and hard to follow, which uh, I would recommend in season to be labeling wires more accurately and like while you're wiring it so that you can follow um, the leads easier because we had a couple of issues where we were plugging the motors into the wrong uh, actuators. So it was uh, our transmission was conflicting with its it, with itself. So making sure to label all of your leads is very important when it comes to uh, lots of wiring like this. So. in addition to the talons here for controlling the Neo brushless motors that we're using as well. Um, so I'm going to call up Andrew now, and uh, we're we still getting... Uh, okay, no, nothing with that. There's a lot of Fs in the chat, apparently. Uh, yeah. All right, um, so right now I'm going to call on Andrew, and Andrew's going to come up and he's going to talk about some of the code stuff that we're doing right now. Sure. So, um, what we just demoed there with the the arm or the uh, the wrist moving down, um, er and every actuator on this robot, uh, the only one that we're still working on is the arm. But uh, the way we're controlling them is um, they're all going to be following trapezoidal motion profiles. Um, so you saw how we're able to basically control um, not only the position that that uh, gripper is moving to, but also um, its maximum speed and velocity along the way. Um, so what we've been working on today uh, is just going through and tuning these. Um, these are, it's really simple. Um, it's just a proportional term that's basically instead of trying to uh, get to the, the final position, it's following this, this pre-planned um, list of positions basically uh, to, to prevent from, you know, slamming down. Um, additionally, there's a feed forward term which uses the, the velocity component in the motion profile that we calculate um, to basically provide a, a perfect world estimate. Um, so really, we're only correcting for how much our, our system is imperfect. Um, so as we go through here, uh, we'll hopefully be able to have, you know, one button presets where uh, we'll say, like, go, go to the second level, and we'll be able to simultaneously move the elevator, the arm, and the wrist joint um, in unison and keep it smooth. All right, so throughout the night here, we're going to be progressively improving our code, um, fixing, uh, figuring out what our set points are, things of that nature. So hopefully, you know, keep tuning in, and hopefully you can see some cool robot stuff happen uh, the rest of the night here. Um, so with that, we are ready to take some questions, I believe. So... If you have, uh, oh wait, oh Aiden, sorry, I forgot to talk about that part. I I, I apologize. I apologize. You want to go ahead and talk about um, our uh, raising mechanism that we've got? Yeah. Hi, Chet. Um, I'm Aiden from Sharp 3260. Um, so with the uh, habitat level uh, design, we had that as a lower priority um, on the initial uh, set of prototyping and development. 
Um, we were fairly certain we'd be able to get to level two with some uh, minimal mechanisms. So we kind of uh, tabled that till today. Uh, and, and what we came up with was a pretty simple system of uh, three pneumatic cylinders, uh, one in the front on the left here. Um, and because the front of the robot is uh, lighter than the rear, the CG is somewhat rearward. Uh, we only need one in the front. And we have two in the rear uh, to uh, compensate for the rearward CG. And, and the premise of this is that you only need to jack up the front of the robot to get the front wheels at least six inches off the off the ground and that allows you to get your first and or second wheel as you drive forward along the HDP cover of the level one um, and that gets you on to the level two step uh, but once you're there uh, you need to jack up the rear to be able to continue driving on to the the level two platform um, and so what we're using here specifically are each of these pistons are one and a quarter inch diameter strokes. So at 60 PSI, each of them is putting out about 100 pounds of force. Uh, in this case, uh, we're not 100% sure if we could decrease the bore or decrease the stroke length. Um, but this is, this is what we had and uh, we're, we're pretty confident that it'll that will meet our, our requirements for a quick and dirty system. All right. Thanks so much, Hayden. Um, and with that, I don't believe there's anything else we had uh, planned. To, yeah. Um, okay. We have lots of questions. All right. Feel free to, while we disconnect this, feel free to, um, you know, shoot out the first question, please. And... We'll get ready to uh, to answer. Can you talk about uh, the members on First Capital and who you are? Sure. Okay. So we have we're majority members from FRC two two five and FRC twenty five ninety. The the majority here, actually everybody, is either a mentor or an alumni of either those two teams or a friend of one of those, uh, you know, people on one of those two teams, a Aiden being the one from uh, 3260 here. Um, and uh, my wife, Heather, is also from 2041. Um, and uh, Nikki was here briefly. She's from 1807. So um, it's, it's a mix across, uh, across, uh, across teams who are involved in this program. Alti Impulse asks, how far off center can the hatch panel be picked up by the manipulator? So, uh, do you guys want to come up? Yeah, um, we've been testing it out. It seems like you can be off by about three inches. Yeah, in, in either direction, so left, right, or forward, backwards. Hotshots Mania asks, what other ideas did you come up with for the intake mechanism, and why is this one beneficial? It was, the question here was, what other ideas did we come up for intake mechanisms? Uh, uh, do, do, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll involve Richard here, too, because yeah, he sure. a lot on the ball intake. Yeah. Uh, yeah you can talk about for intaking the cargo, we did um, throw around some different ideas with side rollers, top rollers having rollers on the top and the bottom. And the top roller allowed us to have a wider intake while still being able to center it, whereas the side rollers we had to be dead on to intake properly. So that's why we ended up going with this design. And uh, I'll talk about the uh, intake for the uh, hatch panels real quick. Um, this uh, Velcro mechanism was actually the first one we tried, uh, and it worked really well, so we kind of just went with that. Um, ben, you played around with some wheeled intakes, right? Just for briefly. Yeah. I played around with a 2017 style wheeled intake. I think if someone wants to run into the other room right here, we can grab a copy of what it looked like and I can talk about what was uh, what was wrong with it. Now, granted, this was like at 1230 in the morning and we were trying to get this finished. Um, but, uh, you know, we got something, something started a little bit. It was basically a set of wheels. In this case, the, um, you know, some of the, the Andy Mark um, compliant wheels 
which work really great for uh, for grabbing the item. But the problem is when you're trying to grab something that's this thin and having a piece of uh, you know any type of material to that slides under it, you have to have something that it will slide over, and then you have to have something that will stay rigid enough to hold the game piece. And the problem we were having with this polycarb in particular was it rigid enough to hold the game piece. So um, maybe with some further refining, someone could figure out how to make something work here. We tossed around the idea of maybe switching it to uh, you know a thicker material or a stronger material like steel or something like that. Uh, but there are, there are a number of um, th this is the other type of design that we were looking at here. Yeah. Conmaster ten eighteen asks, are you concerned about the Velcro being worn out? I'll uh, let Griffin take this. Uh, yes. Um, the <laughs> The, uh, as someone actually said in the chat, which is a great point, um, the, um, per the game manual, and they said in the, in the reveal video, um, they're going to ensure that the hatch panels, um, or the Velcro on the hatch panels is in a good enough condition to be able to stick to the field elements. Um, so the thought would be that if it's good enough to stick to the field elements, uh, it would be good enough to stick to Velcro that we put on, uh, our robot. Um. It's very likely that you'd end up having to replace the hook tape um, that's on our mechanism after some amount of time. I don't know what that amount of time is, but um, it seems pretty reasonable you have to replace it after a while. Atomic Adam 7 wants to know how you get up to the higher scoring area. So, um, with that, the, how we get up to the higher scoring area is we have an elevator, a two stage elevator and a four bar mechanism. So the, uh, the two stage elevator works similar to a lot of the elevators we saw last year where it's the, the cascading style. You can read about a lot of these on Chief Delphi or um, if people are interested, post here and uh, in chat and tag at first updates now if you want us to give a little demo about how that works. But it's a two stage elevator with a four bar mechanism. All three in our case are powered by the new Neo brushless motors with uh, Spark Max controllers. So um, these, uh, this is how we raise it up and get it to the locations that we need to score. Nif Awit wants to know, is the elevator working and are you worried about tipping when the elevator is up? So as far as worried about tipping when the elevator is up, we did some, uh, at the end of the night last night, uh, the CG of our robot, the center of gravity, was really far back and we were having issues with it being a little tippy. As a result, we moved the battery forward, and that solved a lot of our CG issues. Um, but we still need to do tests with uh, the elevator up and moving around. Granted, you shouldn't be moving too much when you're too fast when your elevator is up uh, for risk of tipping. But it's uh, it's definitely something that teams should be concerned with and think about here. Uh, what was the other part of the question, Heather? Can you demonstrate the elevator? Can we demonstrate? Can we demonstrate the elevator? Yes, uh, the elevator is working. We won't do it right now um, until we get the arm working. We've got the wrist working and the elevator working, but the arm is, uh, we're still working through some issues. So between those two, we're, um, as soon as we get the arm working, then we're in more of a demonstrable position to do that, that sort of work. Hopefully we can get some footage of it on the stream tonight. So if you tune in later, you might get a chance to see that. Is it mini floor says, are you concerned how concerned are you about the manipulator being damaged during defense play as it's not under much protection? You guys want to take that? So, because we were going for a lightweight design for the manipulator, as lightweight as we could get it for an integrated mechanism like this, there is obviously the threat of it being damaged when it is down. For the most part, we're hoping that this only goes down when we're, intake, when we're intaking from the floor. From the human station, it stays folded in the robot primarily. And hopefully, once you pick up the mechanism, the, the game element, excuse me, you just fold it back into your robot for the rest of your journey to scoring it. So, the solution to it being damageable would be to keep it in your robot as much as possible until you need to use it. Our mechanism is also made out of primarily polycarbonate, which is shown to be a very uh, um, material that is very resistant to damage in FRC games. It tends to flex when you hit it from the side or things of that nature. 
Backup boy asks, have you had problems when trying to intake cargo? The hatch panel side of the mechanism gets stuck to the carpet or not? Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, yes. So <laughs> one of the problems we saw first when we were like, oh man, we can just put this hatch pickup on the underside of the cargo intake. Um, we were like, uh, you know, shoot, we're going to get stuck to the carpet. Um, but uh, the quick solution we came up with for that was... Uh, just to uh, set up the intake such that when we're actually going to uh, pick up the cargo, we're set at an angle here. Um, so we can drive uh, with the intake on the ground um, and not be stuck to the carpet. Um, we've, someone, uh, someone else asked, have we tested while uh, driving? Uh, and yes, it, it works while driving. Um, and so this kind of tilted down position is our cargo intake position. Um, and then this will go flat uh, when we're attempting to uh, pick up the hatch panels. Yep, something like that. Um, <laughs> now it's stuck to the carpet. Um, and then uh, we'll go uh, up to 90 degrees when we're going to either place it on the rocket, place it on the cargo ship, or intake from the human player station. All right, thanks, guys. Dr. Wuga wants to know about your use of Neo motors. We are using three different Neo motors on this robot. We have two on the elevator for uh, for raising our our mechanism up and down, and we have one on our four bar arm that is used to lift our uh, lift our mechanism the last little bit that needs to reach the highest levels, and also to push our uh, game pieces out a little bit further out of the robot so that we can do things like press the uh, press the hatch panels against the side of the rocket and things of that nature. So we've got three Neo motors on the robot. Abeloth asked, are you concerned with the launching rules and the potential release distance you have with the pistons launching? Um, it, with regards to the launch rules, could, one, could someone come over here and raise the arm up for me? And we'll show, we'll show just how far it is actually out of the frame perimeter when, when we hold it at 90, which is really, it, like, you're not, you're not going to launch it in this direction. When can you can you move it to 90 here? Yeah, well, move this to 90. Keep this keep this straight out and move this 90 90. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, I wasn't clear. Um, all right. So when you look at this, yeah, yeah, we can we can fire it. Uh, you're you're actually. Uh, it's gonna be number one, I believe. One. No, zero, zero, zero. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, no, no pressure. I don't think. Is there? We, we um, we go ahead, go ahead and hook it up. I'll talk about it while you get it. Yeah, yeah. I'll take another question. We can show it in a second. Electron official wants to know how your four bar is actuated. Okay, our four bar is actuated by a single neo motor through a versaplanetary transmission. So, and then we have a chain reduction after that. We we always want to have a chain reduction at the end of our arms, just in case the arm comes down and slams on something, and it gives a little bit of shock resistance so that you don't actually damage any of the gears in the transmission and things of that nature. So, it's just a, a lot of stuff that you uh, that you keep an eye on here. I I think you guys just need to pressurize. Yeah. Yes. Then Grantober 952 asked, what is the gear reduction on the intake motor? Uh, the gear reduction on the intake motor, I believe, uh, correct me if, uh, 7 to 1. 7 to 1. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we should be able to fire it now. Yeah, so... By our approximation, that's not launching it even two feet here, but from the centroid of it. Yeah. 
If it's a problem by uh, through the inspection process, we can always reduce it with a secondary regulator to decrease the amount of pressure that's pushed to it. Um, a very simple way to accomplish that. Ben, something I just want to mention is that, guys, keep in mind that we are not the official Q&A, so make sure you take any major questions to the Q&A when that opens up. That will be your resource to get official statements. These are all prototypes and proofs of concepts. None of these are officially competition legal unless it's been approved by either the manual or by Q&A. 100%. Thank you, Tyler. Ezareth wants to know, have you co tried collecting off of the ground for either object while driving? Uh, that's that's a good question. I would say you'll be able to, we'll, we'll hopefully be testing a lot of that, uh, that type of work um, after this stream, after we do a little bit more tuning of, uh, of our different subsystems. It's that's uh, we've it's stuff that we've done by hand, obviously, and done by pushing the robot. But we haven't done it powered by motors yet. So uh, for for a lot of it, some of it we we've done it with individual motors, just not all of them together. So hopefully, we'll see a lot of that coming together here shortly. Biggest hobbit asked, have you tried the climb with the bumpers? We haven't tried the climb yet. That's something that we'll be trying out soon. Commaster1018 asked, are you concerned with the vel or no, we did that one. Uh, are you concerned about accidentally bending low rider hydraulics as you drive on the platform? That's another question. That, that's a good question. It's something that we haven't really te done all of our testing yet. Or you got something? All right. A Aiden, is, uh, Aiden has an answer for there. Um, so, yeah, that's one thing we're concerned with, and that's one of the reasons why we chose just uh, really beefy cylinders with, with really beefy uh, bores. Yeah, three eighths uh, rods, and but one thing we've added to the bottom of each of those pistons. It's it's hard to see from yeah uh, from the bottom. You may be able to see. I oh know it's actuated. Can we actuate them? <laughs> yeah. So so what you can see on the bottom is we have. HDPE uh, pucks on the bottom of each of the cylinders, and uh, when sliding along the HAB HDP, there's an incredibly low. Oops, they're gonna. These four pucks, or these three pucks right here, um, that has an incredibly low coefficient of friction, so that will minimize the bending moment on the rods of the cylinders when they're extended. But in general, that's that's our biggest concern with this system. Um, but can be there. There are different ways of achieving a similar uh, type of effect with stilts actuating downward with a motor or a rotary mechanism, some sort of four bar. Uh, but this is the basic premise. Uh, yeah, the pucks are uh, they're either Delrin or HDP something, something very slick uh, with HDP. And uh, Dr. Wuga asked, does the robot start from level two, and if so, does the fall impact the robot? I would say that we haven't done a whole lot of work with regards to autonomous and starting from level two and things of that nature. However, we do not believe that the fall from level two will impact the robot. Dr. Wuga also asked, is there any mechanism you'd want to reinforce or simplify? Um, do, does anyone in, uh, from the crowd have a good one for that one? I know for, in my case, uh, the elevator itself, I would, uh, I would probably reduce to 16th box handle, slim it up, because right now, full disclosure, we are a bit overweight, um, but it, that being said, a lot of, uh, a lot of the mechanisms that we are using could be lightened and, uh, implemented in ways that wouldn't reduce any, any structural issues and actually improve the robot. Um, we just don't have time to do it in three days. So, uh, you got something, Michaela? Yeah. Um, so we've actually talked a lot about different ways that we could simplify and make it lighter. Um, one of the things is we keep putting lightning holes kind of everywhere. Um, but we've also talked about, um, that we don't really need the four bar arm necessarily, but, uh, it's kind of what we've done before. And so we knew it would work. Um, and so there's a lot of different things on this robot that we have come up with different ideas for that might work better or just as well as the ones that we have on this robot.
Yes, there is an implementation of this robot where your your four bar arm could probably be a stick. But um, anyway, well, we're ready to uh, it, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Hot Shots Mania asks, what's your plan for covering the electronics? Uh, yeah, Richard made the part too. Yeah. 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 Um, this is how TechFire did it last year, and so we just kind of took another piece of polycarbonate and stuck it on the backside, and also, like, so it just covers everything up, which, <laughs> um, and so it will go on the back and cover up the electronics to keep them from being damaged. Anything you'd like to add? I mean, that's too. <laughs> All right, before we get to the next question, let's uh, go ahead and start our set of giveaways. So we got a whole bunch of stuff to do. Also want to give a reminder that if you haven't voted yet, hover over your screen, you'll see an opportunity for you to vote for the name of the robot. Right now, looking at the polls, well, I'm not sure how we feel about this, folks, but uh, Chungus X is in first place right now. I know we got a couple cheers by some of our uh, Tech Fire people. Uh, right now in first place, followed by uh, Deet Spacito. Then Destination Deep Dish and Hot Yoga is not really getting a whole lot of uh, hotness today. So, uh, But we are going to start the giveaway. So once again, make sure you uh, click the follow button up on top if so you can get more first updates. Now, we do shows during the build season every Tuesday. And a big announcement to make, we are going to be hosting two competitions in the next two Sundays. So next Sunday, we're going to be hosting the MCC Minimum Competitive Concept Robot Competition down in Texas, hosted by our friends the Robonauts next Sunday. And then the Sunday after that, there's actually going to be a Robot in Three Days competition in Michigan. So we're going to be hosting that one as well, too. So make sure you check those out, as well as every Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we do have shows during the build season, so make sure you stop on by. First updates now. So the giveaway keyword for today is going to be pancake. Ben, why is the giveaway keyword pancake today? The giveaway keyword is pancake because the pancake is one of the game pieces. <laughs> So fair enough, if you're interested in uh, winning that, like I said, click the uh, uh, follow button, or if you'd like to get five times luck for this, and by the way, we're giving away five different things, three things from analog devices, uh, one from our friends at Red uh, Redfish Robotics, who made a fun first update now mug, and then an awesome uh, first capital uh, t-shirt as well, too. Uh, please keep in mind, uh, for the mug and the t-shirt those are going to be u.s only due to shipping restrictions uh and north america only for the analog devices as well so i do apologize to our uh, friends that are not in north america but we do have issues shipping with customs so uh, we can't do that but once again pancake and good luck we're going to draw five separate times for five different winners and we'll take a few more questions before we do that awesome thank you tyler nisha asked what's the length of the drop center on the drive base the drive base has the standard VersaBlock uh, drop center where it's offset by a 16th inch either way depending on which way you flip it. Now, the total drop for the center wheels with that is 1 8th inch. Cyrus Vanini asked, how does interaction with the bumpers affect getting on have level 2? I would say that from our testing, it doesn't look like the bumpers are going to have any interference issues. However, we should get that on stream shortly, and you'll, uh, you'll get to see that. However, we haven't done a physical test with everything yet, but that should be forthcoming. And Will Bussler asked, is your drive base drop center? Yes, our drive base is drop center. It's drop center by 1 8 inch. Etheroth asked, do you think a cascade or continuous lift makes more sense for this game? Um, we could see it either way. The continuous lift would be nice for doing the uh, a behind-the-back shot, say, in the second level, if you were doing that with a ball uh, of some sort. It really depends on what you're trying to do. Um, it, it, continuous versus cascading is... You know, a hot button issue among some teams, like they have their preference, it's either one or the other uh, a lot of times. So it, it's, it really depends on what's best for you, what you understand, that sort of thing. Um, it, in our case, we're familiar with cascading lifts, so that's the route that we took. T. McBride asked, will you be releasing CAD? Yeah, you want to you wanna comment on that, Dahani? Yeah, you can come up here. Now... Uh, so not a lot of 
uh, the robot was modeled um, in CAD, just like uh, the parts we needed the dimensions for. Um, I'll try and clean up the CAD, and hopefully we will be able to release it. Um, so yeah, that's that. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll release what we can. Hot Shots Mania asks, why did you choose a six mini sim drivetrain versus the other possibilities like Mechanum, Arcade, Swerve, Tank, etc.? We chose, like, comparing six mini sim versus tank, uh, I'll say why we chose a, uh, a eight-wheel drive tank drive. The eight wheels are, we, we opted for eight over six because we, getting up into the habitat at the different levels, we thought having eight would, especially in a three-day build where you don't have a whole lot of time to uh, make your decisions and you have to make them very quickly so you can start building things, we thought that the eight would future-proof us to make sure that we could get up to the higher level just in case. Um, we can go with tank drive because tank drive is always a reliable choice. It's fast to put together. It makes it so you can put more time toward the rest of your mechanisms as opposed to spending more time trying to, you know, get details working on your drivetrain when you've got limited resources to pull it off. Rogue Mogul asks, how are you planning to combat defense while at the racket, and especially when the elevator's up? We would say that one of the advantages of having uh, – the configuration kind of what we have here is you're facing the scoring locations basically head on so you could do a lot of face planting the wall that you know keeps you from moving also the vex pro traction wheels that we're using are great for you we've got eight of them it's going to be harder to spin us sideways when we've got all, all eight of them it's kind of like almost having tank treads so um between those things it should uh, keep us in place decently well Uh, Trout Master Gaming asked, where's the Michigan RA3D competition? So the RA3D competition, I believe right now, is stated to be at Fair State University, FSU. So that's not 100% confirmed from first updates now, so you need to check with your local sources on that, but I'm under the impression it's at Fair State University. Eveloth asked, are you planning on showing offline following or any other features for dealing with the sandstorm period? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it. Yeah. Do you have anything about uh, line following or anything you want to? Oh yeah. Well, there, there's no. Yeah, that's fair. There's no line following sensors on the robot right now. Um, you know, if we feel inspired at 2 a.m. tonight or something, maybe we'll throw them on. But it, 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 right now, that that's that's not a lot of the stuff we're probably going to be showing off. We're probably going to be showing off more motion profiling and, you know. All right, yeah, I've been uh, told from the sideline it's going to be dead reckoning if we show off any auto stuff. So for people who don't know what that means, that means moving your robot with sensors being primarily the uh, the gyro and the encoders to uh, basically determine your position on the field. So we're, we're going to show off a lot more just, uh, you know, adjusting the motion of the robot and, you know, scoring in for teleop reasons, that sort of thing. So real quick, I would just want to jump in, guys, uh, since we're starting to uh, go a little bit long on time and we still want to let, let these uh, folks get back to work. We have a couple more questions, but we're not going to be taking any more for this show. However, uh, we will uh, try to answer them throughout the night. So if you do stick around or if you want to ask more questions after the actual show breaks, uh, then you have an opportunity to do that. And we're going to do our uh, drawing right after we get done with these last few questions. So if you haven't put in Pancake yet, please make sure you do so for your opportunity to win. All right, Grant over nine five two asks: Are the cylinders on the hatch mechanism single acting, and what's the stroke? This, yeah, the single, um, the cylinders on the hatch mechanism are a two-inch stroke, and they're double acting cylinders. Neutral asked: Is there going to be a driving demonstration? There will not be a driving demonstration right now. However, stay on the stream, and if we start driving, then we'll point the camera toward it, and you'll get to see what's going on. And last question. That's not here. Uh, Dr. Wuga asked, uh, what part of the process was most fun or least fun? Um, here, let's go around the horn with that one. Everyone, uh, go ahead. Yeah, a lot of us, uh, I'm the only one who's done RI3D before. I did it with Team Indiana back in 2016. Um, you know, I just think it's it's a lot of fun to build a, uh, a robot that is that can that you could show to a lot of uh, a lot of different people, inspire a lot of different people to maybe. 
you know, a mechanism that they might be interested in. I was always, when I was a student, I was always one of those students that was really, uh, I had to see it in order to really understand it. And so having these types of resources for everybody, I think is a great way to see what's available. And you can look at it and you could say like, oh, I had combined that from that robot and that from that robot, put them together. Um, because not everyone always, you know, pulls things out of thin air. So being able to have those visual resources available to lots of teams, I think is very useful. Um, yeah, I just want to call people up here one by one, you know, you can say whatever you liked or don't like, or uh, or pass if you so wish. But, yeah. Yeah, quick process. I think one thing that's useful to take away from RI3D robots is that uh, you'll see a lot of different ways of doing things, and some RI3D teams will actually build a robot that just doesn't work or barely works, and I think we've... Uh, even with choosing some of the very first designs that we prototyped, we came out with a decent robot um, so far, and we, we, we want to see how it actually drives and comes together. But it um, there's a lot of different ways to do this, and picking and choosing and, and seeing like a first try at these things is really helpful for kind of getting your, your uh, thoughts going on, on different ways of doing it. A uh, quick one. Um... I've never done any sort of live stream thing before. I thought taking questions from chat was really fun. Yeah. All right. Yeah. A anyone else have anything to add? Yeah. Um, the lack of the lack of sleep is really hard because we're working really late into the night, and even on a like an FRC team, we're still like going home by like ten o'clock usually, and here we're here till last night. People were here until two a.m. So. It's 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 tough. So one thing I want to do real quick, actually, can we bring on uh, let's bring on Donnie uh, back here, who, who wants to come on because he because he's he wasn't yeah. part of this process. He was mentoring two twenty five, and I know he has a very important message to say. Yeah. As apparently he's going through a wardrobe change as yeah. he has to come on stream, but yeah. but I, I want to give a sec because Donnie brought up a really really good point for teams. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about yeah, that. This real is very quick. important, everyone. Hi everybody. So I'm Donnie. <clears throat> it's pronounced Kurtanic. But um, one of the things you should not get, and you know, my wife went over with the team last night, uh, 225, is do not get design fixation from RI3D or anything you see. It's very important. Don't get fixated on the design because you're gonna, you're, you're, that's all you're going to think about. <laughs> so you know, keep in mind, this is great to look at, but don't have this design and get fixated on it forever. There's a lot of great... Yeah, there's a lot of great robots out there, and the one that will well, will be best in the world is probably not going to be a direct clone of what an RI3D robot is. So really, really think about it. Um, do we have anything else to uh, to cover before we go to giveaways? No, let's start doing our giveaways awesome. uh, right away on here. So last chance, we're going to be rolling each one. We're going to do uh, the shirt, Ben. Can you grab that shirt once again? Yeah. So that's going to be the first one. You're going to have a choice. Uh, we don't have too many options, folks. So it's either going to be small, medium, or large. So if you're like me, it's going to be a nice uh, yeah. bedtime you, shirt to wear. Do you want to model uh, again, Mikhail? All right. <laughs> I don't know. You did it the first time. All right. So the winner of that one is going to be somebody who's not following. Guess what? You don't win. So DC Domino should have followed, buddy. So we're going to roll a new one. The Overlord 6190 is following and a subscriber. So they're going to win uh, that shirt. Congratulations, Overlord. I know you've won a couple times before. Our next uh, thing that we're going to be giving away then is going to be uh, the mug uh, from our friends over at uh, Red, uh, I'm sorry, Redfish Robotics. So if you uh, haven't had an opportunity to see this mug yet, uh, I don't even have one, but this is pretty cool. So uh, the winner of that one is going to be uh, Will Bustler. Congratulations! He won the. Is that is that somebody from here? Or? Somebody from he's from, from three hundred three apparently. So congratulations on that will and if you do win make sure you please uh, shoot first updates now a private message with your mailing information so we can get that out to you and last but not least we have three giveaways from our friends at analog devices uh, so we're going to be giving away two gyro boards and then an IMU board the first winner of the gyro board is going to be uh, WB Jizzle congratulations to you uh, follower of the stream so WB Jizzle will win uh, one of the gyro boards uh, next person who's going to win gyro board is uh, uh, Andrew. Apparently, <laughs> apparently it's somebody in here. So congratulations! Yeah, who happens to be in the room? Yeah, that's that's definitely rigged. I want to see a lot of rigged emotes <laughs> in chat uh, for that. 
It, it, probably one of the the most appropriate giveaways. That we've had. Yeah, totally rigged though, yeah. no, nonetheless. And then the uh, final winner of the IMU uh, board from Analog Devices Inc. It's going to be Electron Official. Congratulations, and congratulations to everybody who won tonight. We have giveaways quite frequently on our shows from some amazing sponsors and donors. So if you're interested in winning, make sure you uh, check out our shows every Tuesday during the build season at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern, and then many other shows once we start hitting competition season, uh, including Mondays and Tuesdays, and FTC shows every other Wednesday. Back to you, Ben. All right. Thanks so much, Tyler. So I believe we're, we're concluding the stream now. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah. I mean, All well, right. we're, All right. we're concluding the show, not well, the stream. Concluding the show, not the stream. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. So how long, if we're going to yeah. be going, we're going to actually film until about midnight tonight. They might yeah. go a little bit longer, but we'll probably stop at midnight Eastern. Uh, but lots to come still, guys. So stick around. If you have more questions we didn't get to, ask them in chat, and we'll get those to as well. What's that? Oh, the oh, yeah. robot, the robot name, name poll. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us. Oh, my goodness. We couldn't have forgotten that. What would have happened? So, with that said, the robot's name is going to be... Yeah, we have a lot of excitement and uh, maybe oh, not man. so much excitement. What's it Winning be? with 38% of the votes, Chungus X. Uh, Chungus, Chungus X, X is going to take it. Congrats. Man. Congratulations. Uh, to, no. Apparently, uh, Donnie doesn't this one. like it so much, guys, but... So once again, Chungus X is going to win on there with 33 uh, votes. Uh, so thank you, everybody, uh, for voting uh, on there as well. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. So I just want a quick review for everybody. Make sure uh, that you don't get design fixation. I'm going to say it again. Um, you, There's lots of robots out there. You can't just – you, you got you to really think about it and be flexible if something – in your design, if you need to change it, too many people like are locking in. I see things on Discord all the time, just like, we're doing this, we're doing this, whatever. And, you know, I can't count the last time that our team just, like, was set in stone in anything until even almost, like, week three, week four. We're tacking on mechanisms all the time when based on what happens in the outside world. So, you know, you just got to keep an eye on it. Always look for more information and use that to inform what you should do. Lots of iteration. All right, so I to conclude here, I want to make sure that we thank our sponsors here. we got to thank First Updates Now, again, for this generous support for us here. We want to thank uh, the York City and the York Convention Center's York Bureau for really helping us out to put this on, being a great supporter of us. Thank Rev. Thank Andy Mark. Thank Vex. Thank uh, Coupling Corporation of America, where we're working, Paragon Engineering Services for our practice field, and uh, Pen Air for a lot of the pneumatic components that we've worked on. So thank you so much to all sponsors, and Tyler's got something real quick. We also want to say thank you to everybody who's helped support the stream today to keep fun, loud, live, and independent. Uh, starting with some subscribers here, uh, Tier 6 Scott, Thomas1746, uh, Daniels, uh, Zabro18, uh, Ian Brinkerhoff, Faulty Impulse, Troutmaster Gaming, Rix84, Electron Official, uh, and Nezuel, and then some bits uh, from Azatoth, Comaster1018, and uh, Ian uh, Brinkerhoff coming both with bits and subs. Thank you, everybody, to help keeping fun, loud, live, and independent. And just a reminder, we are going to actually have the reveal for RA3D, uh, if you're available, tomorrow at about noon Eastern. So I know a lot of you might not be able to catch it. Don't worry, we'll record it for you. But noon Eastern, and we have a lot of content from RA3D up on Fun's YouTube page right now, so go check it out at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support Fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe.